But now we'll move on to dominate dominance matrices and here it will have a certain use. And what dominance matrices essentially are used for is, for example, a competition or a round robin tournament. So essentially what it indicates is, for example, if a lot of teams are versing other teams, we want a way to sort of represent what team is winning and what team is losing. So here we'll have a winner and a loser. So what the way that we sort of interpret this is if we have um, a one here, what that means is that if team C was versing team B, team C is going to be the winner, the winner and team B is going to be the loser. So that's the dominant. So the one on the left is going to be, so if there's a one, so if, however, if there's a zero, for example, here, what that means, um, actually, that's a bad example. Um, so this one over here, Ooh. sorry. Okay. So if there's a zero here, what that means is if B is worth seeing C, B is going to lose and C is going to win. So that's how you would interpret this type of um, matrix. So very similar to communication matrices, but just get really used to the headings and what they mean. Um, okay, so um, then we can also have two-step dominances. So two-step dominances is um, very similar to two-step communication is when one team versed another team who has bet another team. So very sort of confusing, but um, again, the way that you would find the two-step um, dominance matrix is by squaring the one-step dominance matrix. So first you would have to construct the one-step dominance matrix and then square it to find the two-step dominance matrix. And what this two shows here is, for example, it was A and um, sorry, B, just as an example, if it was B and A, what this indicates is that B has bet A, has bet a team two times that has also bet A. So for example, it might be B has dominated C, which has dominated A, and it might be that B has dominated D, which has dominated A. So this is what the two would indicate in that situation. And then we have total dominance. So total dominance here does have a particular meaning. So once we find the total dominance matrix by adding the one-step dominance matrix and the two-step dominance matrices, we will get the total dominance matrix. And the way that we would, we would use the total dominance matrix is we would find the um, overall dominance. And the way that we would do it is we would add the numbers in each row. So here we have a three, um, here we have a five, a four, and then a two. So once we've added all the numbers in the, co in the rows, what we then need to do is find out the order. So B, which was this um, row here, is a five. So therefore B has the total dominance or has bet the most number of teams. And then a four, and then a three, and then a two. So that's how you would find the overall winner in a competition like this.